The conclusion of the first week on the journey was marked by a new rhythm on the road. It had to do with finding my groove traveling on the motorcycle. Also, the landscape had changed. Mountains and twisty roads put a big smile on my face. Today started with a ride through Garden of the Gods and the Red Rock Formations. I was on my way to Pikes Peak, America's mountain. Pikes Peak is the highest summit in the Rocky Mountains in North America. At over 14,115 feet, I definitely felt the altitude. The sun was out and the views were for miles. The ride to the top delivered a temperature drop of over 25 degrees, which I welcomed. I was above the clouds and watched them roll by. It's about the people you meet. Nature, riding, and the outdoors are aspects of the journey. But the people you meet and their stories, well, that's what traveling is all about. The wonderful thing about hearing other people's stories and sharing my own is that very quickly it becomes clear how connected we are and how sane we are. There's no politics, religion, or judgment. Simply, people are connecting around a common theme, travel. There's always some common bond that is a doorway into the bigger truth that we're all human beings. All it takes is a little effort to listen to one another without judgment, to have empathy, and to recognize the human condition that is the same for all of us. Just a little effort is needed, and the rest is effortless. Sometimes, all it takes is a smile. Descending Pikes Peak, the temperature climbed and it was way hot again. I knew a road trip on the bike in August would entail high temperatures and some rain. I didn't anticipate the extent to which that was true. I thought getting to the mountains meant it would cool down considerably and be drier out west. Over the last week, it seemed like the rain gear came out almost every day. I headed north to Evergreen. As I continued in Pikes Peak Forest, I could see in the distance around the various mountain peaks, dark cloud formations. It became apparent that the rain gear was going to come out again. Back on my route, it was a deluge. I was beginning to get pelted with sugar cube sized hail. Eventually I stopped for gas and to seek shelter. Can't believe it's hailing. I made it to Evergreen in a small quaint town. I was done for the day. I found a nice inn and it was in walking distance of the town even though the knee was still not cooperating. I took a walk into town, a burger, a beer, and then Rocky Road ice cream for dessert. Tomorrow, Mount Evans.
Waking up to the shining sun and a wonderful breakfast in Evergreen at the Inn, I was ready for a great day of riding. There were no clouds in the sky and I was excited to climb to the top of Mount Evans. The ride to Mount Evans and Echo Lake was a spectacular precursor to what was to come next. The mountains and forests kept coming as I rolled on the throttle and leaned the bike into the twists and turns. I arrived at the entrance to Mount Evans Scenic Byway and to my surprise, my annual National Park Pass was accepted. Jackpot. No additional fee, unlike Pikes Peak. I started the ascent up and the expansive views overloaded my senses. I quickly brought my attention back to the hairpin turns. The riding was awesome, and it was reminiscent of motorcycling in the European Alps. The difference being the elevation here significantly exceeded any of the Alpine passes in Europe. The summit of Mount Evans is at an elevation of 14,130 feet. It's the highest paved road in North America. The temperature dropped over 30 degrees by the time I was at the summit, and the wind made it feel even colder. In the low 40s and windy, but the sun was strong. At the top, I felt the altitude and made an effort to take deep breaths to avoid feeling lightheaded. Mountain goats were climbing the rocks and making their way toward the human intruders. People were hiking out on some trails. I was grateful to pause and just be there. This was the experience I was hoping for and it energized me. I hung out in the cold air for a while appreciating the vast never-ending mountain range and peaks in the distance. The ride up to the summit of Mount Evans definitely took the trip to great new heights and it fueled my desire to keep going. The way down was easier, albeit I still navigated the hairpins, damaged road, and slow cars. In no time I was riding past Echo Lake on another great road in the direction of Idaho Springs for lunch. As I descended the high elevation and eventually rolled into Idaho Springs, the temperature had climbed 40 degrees. Sweaty and hungry, I parked the bike and made my way to find some Colorado-style pizza. As a side note, riding in Colorado was a different experience in the sense that your olfactory senses every now and then encountered a cloud of weed. Whether it was a passing dispensary or the driver in front, was indulging, make no mistake, there was cannabis burning. I was heading north through the forest and mountains on several spectacular roads. Suffice to say, the motorcycling around here rocked. I was on my way to Lyons, Colorado to visit friends. Spending time on this journey connecting with people you know was special. They gave me the gift of their time, friendship, and wonderful hospitality. Breakfast with friends was magical. The hummingbirds were doing their thing, their dog was jumping about, and we were conversing some more over coffee. I said my thank yous, said goodbye, and continued my northwest trajectory. 
On the bike, revving the engine, pushing through the gears, and leaning into the turns, I arrived at Estes Park. I was ready to enter Rocky Mountain National Park and ride Trail Ridge Road across several mountain passes to Grand Lake on the west side of the park. A caravan of cars, motorcycles, and other vehicles were trekking along Trail Ridge Road. It was about 48 miles and it was not up and back. It runs from Estes Park in the east to Grand Lake in the west. You have the feeling that you're going somewhere. The views are big and breathtaking. In the distance, vehicles were specks of dust traversing the road that took you higher and higher in elevation. Long stretches, a hairpin, and then you were climbing again. Approaching Grand Lake, the descent commenced. Elevation dropped and temperature rose. Before I knew it, I had blown through Trail Ridge Road with the feeling that I should have stopped more to take pictures, but I was enjoying the ride too much, too much to stop. The scenery changed by Grand Lake, namely the lake. I continued west through a national forest, then north and west across the Continental Divide. Next was Rabbit Ears Pass from east to west. You wouldn't know it if not for the sign. There are many mountain passes that leave you with the impression of having just gone over a road at some higher altitude. It wasn't that dramatic twist and turn climbing your way up and over the peak of some mountain. Well, it was still a mountain pass and I crossed the Continental Divide. Very cool. Turning north, I was in Steamboat Springs, circling about and calling around for a hotel. I finally picked a place. Walking into the lobby above the front desk was the following quote. Live, travel, adventure, bless, and don't be sorry. Jack Kerouac. It was a great sign and message for me, and I took it as such, but there was no rooms available. I was out and looking for accommodations elsewhere. It was a worthwhile stop if just to receive that message. I found another hotel pretty quickly. It was a great feeling to settle in off the bike after a long day. Nine days on the road and over 2,500 miles. The days were blurring together and I was having to work to keep track. What day was it? How many days on the road? My mind went to tomorrow's route and the plan for the coming days. To travel fast to Glacier National Park or to spend some time in Idaho at Salmon Chalice National Forest. I'd let the road figure it out for me tomorrow.